since I'm going to talk about anxiety, I figured I'd bring my baggage. <laughs> so let's talk about this a little bit. How y'all doing? Good. What I want you to do, we're going to talk a little bit about overcoming anxiety and realizing your most confident, epically chilled self. So on the count of three, I want you to say thank you very loud. One, two, three. And you're not thanking me, I'm not thanking you, we're not thanking our host, though we should. You know what we're thanking? We're thanking anxiety. Because without it, we wouldn't be here. What anxiety really is, is it was nature's way of helping us kind of survive back in the cave dwelling days. Now we just happen to be chased by it because there aren't that many wo uh, woolly mammoths to kill. Um, this is what we're not going to do. We're not going to do what your grandpa would say, stand up and look it in the face and you know, kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We're not going to do breathing exercises. What we're going to do is really change it from a tactical approach to something really strategic in how you live your life. We're going to love it. We're going to love anxiety. Anxiety really is a friend to us. It really is. It's not this big scary thing. Come on. It just wants to be loved. It wants to kind of get with us, go outside, slay a woolly mammoth together. It just wants to help. But since we can't slay woolly mammoths anymore, we're going to actually help, it, help us actually slay something for ourselves, which is becoming a better person, being better in the way we live life. We're going to focus on that. And there are four, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a scientist, so I created these four bogus pillars of wellness. Um, <laughs> spiritual, intellectual, emotional, and physical, because when you can get in a positive place there, there's not a lot of room for anxiety. So, spiritual, give more. Doesn't mean money. Give more of yourself. Get out of the neutral or the taking mind space. Give more means what? It means if somebody's walking behind you at a door, don't slam it in their face. Hold it open. You know, maybe do something bigger. Teach some kids how to read. It's just going to make you feel great. And what it does is it kind of creates a positive space for that energy. Hold on, you're never going to be able to unsee this. There you go. It just makes you, right? Doesn't it feel great when you give? Doesn't it feel great? It kind of fills you up with something and it kind of gets that negativity out of your life. Also, claim your greatness. Each one of you has greatness within you, okay? You don't have to launch the space shuttle. Your greatness can be just being a great mom or a great dad. Maybe it's great at what you're doing at work. Or maybe it's, you know, your greatness is all about going home at night and just making macrame potholders. But when you actually own your greatness and realize you're good at something and you're here and that's you, there's nothing that makes you more confident and nothing that makes you more chill. The other one is seize the day and night. No matter how crazy our days are, there are two times during the day that we own, when we wake up and when we go to sleep. And you should try to ritualize those times. Um, I do that. Um, the one thing about getting up in the morning and, and having that time to yourself is it allows you to bookend your day. You actually are able to create the beginning and the end, and whatever happens in the middle that's crazy, you can deal with it better. This is what I do. This is how I bookend. I do an old-fashioned brush shave every morning. It really is horrible. I mean, it doesn't, get, it doesn't really help me at all, like, but, but the thing is, it just feels great. So that gets me set every morning. I just luxuriate in that uh, while I'm in the shower. Um, at night, I do the crossword puzzle. I've got to run. Uh, the other thing is, Move your body. A lot of people don't like hearing this, but we're creatures that were built with arms and legs. You need to move. It clears your mind. It actually moves around your chi. It gets your energy going. Uh, it takes the physical stress out of your life. And when you can do that, you'll find that it has a combined power uh, that you really can't get from anything else. Come on, guys. <laughs> and then amazing happens because, listen, the thing about anxiety, and I was diagnosed 20 years ago, um, the thing about anxiety is that um, it's kind of like recovering from alcoholism or drug addiction probably. It's, it's a lifelong process. You're always in recovery. But what can happen is when you look at it in a positive way, it's no longer chasing you like those old slides. You've kind of got it tethered by a little leash there, and now you're in a different type of relationship. It may pull hard on you like it's a big dog that's trying to get away, but you'll have a little bit more of a relationship where the two of you understand each other and you could use that energy for positivity. This is what I used to look like when I used to relax and had more hair. Um, but I have to tell you, as somebody who was diagnosed 20 years ago in a horrible situation and really has been pretty chill and not that, pretty kind of uh, 
over it for about 10 or 15 years, I've really found out that uh, one thing is true, and I can say this to all of you, that what I'm talking about right now isn't the end, it's the beginning. Uh, and if you start to incorporate some of this positivity into your life, you'll see that, that, it, that room for anxiety is no longer really there. <laughs>